Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In Zoo Tycoon 1 the highest number of guests you can have in your zoo is 1000. So naturally the question arises, what is the smallest zoo possible that can get you those 1000 guests? To answer this question we need to answer two other questions. How do we generate the most guests and how do we keep the guests in the zoo for as long as possible? Let's start with generating guests. The most important thing you need to get any guests is at least one animal. It is a zoo after all. If you have no animals, your guest generation will always be zero. If those animals are unhappy, your guests will be unhappy as well. So we also need the animals in the zoo to be happy enough for that to not be a problem. So what's the smallest exhibit that can keep an animal happy? Maybe a small 5x5 exhibit of just 25 tiles? 20 tiles? 15? No, you actually only need two tiles to get a happy animal. A gazelle in an exhibit with two tiles of savanna grass and nothing else will be happy. No rocks, no trees, not even any water. All they need is a single tile to stand on and another tile for food to be placed on by a zookeeper so that they don't starve. This is also all we need to get to our goal of 1000 guests, just one poor gazelle in a tiny featureless cage. Two other factors are the zoo entry price and marketing. The entry fee influences the guest generation in steps. If you charge $19 or less, you get the highest guest generation possible. If you charge between $19.25 and $29, it is a bit lower, and so on. Since guests have an unlimited amount of cash, you should always be charging a fee that ends in a 9 to make the most money. Marketing is really simple in this game. You can choose to spend 0, 200, 500 or a thousand dollars a month on marketing and the more you spend the higher your guest generation will be. For this zoo we will charge $19 for the entry and spend 1000 a month on marketing in order to max out the guest generation. With that all set, we are getting guests as quickly as possible, so we can now focus on keeping them in the zoo. Guests have five metrics, happiness, thirst, hunger, bathroom and energy. If any of these are too low and are not being refilled, the guests are more likely to leave the zoo. Happiness is mostly influenced by the happiness of your animals and as long as your animals are happy your guests will likely be reasonably happy too. The other four metrics can be dealt with via different kinds of buildings and additions to your zoo. There are food stalls, drink stalls and restrooms that you can build. These do have a limited capacity though and you will need multiple of them to support a thousand guests. However, the main issue is tired guests. Guests can regain energy by sitting on benches, but benches have an incredibly low capacity so you will need a lot of them, which takes up a lot of space. There is a better way though, and that is a restaurant. A restaurant is an amazing building where guests can eat, drink, go to the bathroom and regain energy. On top of that it has a massive capacity so we only need one of them to support our 1000 guests. There are four different restaurants in the game. The standard and lobby restaurants are 20 tiles large, the rainforest restaurant is 16 tiles large and the prairie dog cafe is the smallest with just 15 tiles. Let's now set up this zoo. The first thing we need to do is pick the right map. Many maps don't have enough space for a restaurant right next to the entrance, either because of the shape of the zoo or because of the unremovable animal statues. One map that does have enough space is Sandy Zoo from Marine Mania, which is the one that we will use. Guests don't care about overcrowding in this game, so we only need a minimal amount of path. Just one tile doesn't work as it traps guests at the entrance, so two tiles of path it is. Now we can build the two tile gazelle exhibit on one of the sides of the path and the restaurant at the end. To prevent guests walking off the path, which they will do in this game, we can place a fence on the side opposite the exhibit. We also need two staff members, one zookeeper to care for the gazelle and one maintenance worker to fix the fences when they break. Now it's time to run the zoo and... 
we don't even get to 20 guests. So what's missing from this zoo? It turns out that guests want more than just animals. They also need some personal entertainment. This is available in all kinds of ways. There are animal houses, a carousel, an elephant ride, a swim shack, playground equipment and more. We only need one tiny thing though and that is a single swing built on the opposite side of the little white fence. It doesn't matter that the guests can't actually use it as the mere fact that it is there is already enough to satisfy their entertainment needs. If we now run the zoo again we will see the guest count slowly climbing and it will keep climbing until we hit the limit. Well, I say slowly, but it's actually quite quick, or it's at least a lot quicker than I expected beforehand. After just two months, we have already reached 100 guests, and this rate of guest generation will not slow down. We hit 200 guests after 4 months and 300 after about half a year. When we hit the halfway mark of 500 guests after 10 months, I did one last thing to make sure that we hit the 1000 guest mark. Animals in Zoo Tycoon are not immortal and will eventually die of old age. If this happens, guests will start leaving the zoo pretty quickly and the run is set back by a large amount. Therefore, I paused the game, sold the gazelle, bought a fresh one and unpaused the game. The guests won't notice the difference and will happily continue spending time staring at a lonely, caged animal while surrounded by hundreds of other guests on only a few square meters. A while later, at just under 900 guests, one of the fences has degraded and is dangerously close to letting the gazelle escape. If this happens, all the guests will leave and everything is ruined. Luckily, I hired a maintenance worker to fix this as I predicted that this would happen. However, the fence isn't getting fixed for some reason, and that reason is that the maintenance worker has decided to hang out in the opposite corner of the zoo. I've seen this behavior in several different zoos now and I'm utterly confused by it. There is nothing there, so what kind of game logic is causing them to go there? Anyway, I moved him back to the exhibit and he fixed the fence. A little bit later, about one and a half years after the start, we reached the milestone of 1000 guests. With a total size of just 20 tiles, this is the smallest zoo I can come up with that can reach that milestone without trapping any guests in the zoo. It is also a profitable zoo, as even with the restaurant priced as low as possible, this zoo made a few thousand dollars of profit a month. This isn't where it ends though, as you can actually increase the guest limit by editing the zoo configuration file. I've set it to 10,000 just to see how far this zoo can get us. At around 1600 guests we can see the restaurant starting to struggle to keep up with the guests needs as there are now a few dozen hungry guests. At just over 1800 guests all four metrics are suffering and we have reached the limit. Guests are now leaving at roughly the same rate as their spawning. If we want any more guests we will need to build more restaurants but that's a thing for another time. If you want to learn more about Zoo Tycoon, you can click this video about how you can drown your guests. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.